In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Welcome to our virtual celebration of the liturgy for the second Sunday of Easter. We thank you very much for continuing to join us here at our liturgies with the Oratory Parishes. As we begin our liturgy today, I invite you to call to mind those intentions that you hold in the silence of your hearts, those individuals in your life who you know need our prayers, and invite you to bring them together in your mind and your heart today as we begin our liturgy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the, in the highest. highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the, in the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Amen. Turn our attention. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people and every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Thanks to the Lord for he is good. 
bliss of his everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for the praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be, do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. 
But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. A priest friend of mine once told me of an experience he had with today's gospel, which I will never forget. While in the seminary, he took a required course, the Johannine Writings. The professor was a world-renowned scholar who had authored the authoritative works on the gospel of St. John. Enrolled in the course was the usual cast of characters. There was the cadre of newly minted seminarians, all sitting right up front, now in their post-baccalaureate studies for the first time. If you've ever been to grad school, I'm sure you can totally picture them. And then there was the group that I would have been in. I won't say older, I'll say fully grown, mature adult seminarians toward the back of the room. Among them was Arnie. Not only was Arnie a later in life vocation, but academics really weren't his cup of tea. Hence, it was taking him just a little longer to complete the required coursework. However, Arnie was a man of deep faith, and he had a profound sense of God's personal presence in his life. Well, this particular class was to begin with a discussion on the previous night's readings, this gospel sometimes dubbed Jesus' appearance to Thomas. Following the opening prayer, the professor began to elicit commentary from the students. Immediately, many of those first row students raised their hand, eager to offer their analysis. In an attempt to impress their teacher, some commented on the theological significance of both appearances having occurred on the first day of the week Sunday, as compared to the existing Jewish custom, which revered Saturday, the end. The new was replacing the old. The theological focus of the resurrection is now on the future. Still others spoke of Jesus' wish of peace, not being only the common greeting of the day, but also a prayer for the eschatological blessings of health, prosperity, and all good things. After a few moments, Arnie decided to raise his hand and join the conversation. Once acknowledged, he shared, do you know what always struck me about this encounter between Jesus and Thomas? It's that Jesus healed Thomas with his wounds. And with that unadorned yet deeply insightful observation, the expert professor paused in contemplation gave a brief smile and said, after that, there's nothing else any of us could add to today's discussion. Class dismissed. Way to go, Arnie. Jesus healed Thomas with his wounds. How simple, yet how profound. You know, the tendency in today's gospel is to get a bit down on Thomas for his apparent lack of faith. I mean, even think of the term that we've all heard before, to be a doubting Thomas. But I believe Thomas often gets a bad rap. Here he is, one deeply in love with and committed to Jesus, who has just witnessed his friend be put on trial, ridiculed, publicly shamed, tortured, and put to death. Which of us could watch all of this happen to a loved one and not be hurt ourselves. Thomas was wounded. And now he returns to the upper room and his friends say to him, guess who we just saw? It was too much for Thomas to handle. Jesus understood Thomas's hurt. And just like with you and me, he met Thomas there. Jesus reached out to him in his brokenness. Bring your hand and put it in my side. They shared their woundedness together. And in so doing, he was healed. Maybe even with everything else going on in our world today, 
What a comfort it is to have a savior who knows what it feels like to hurt, who knows what it is to be broken, and one who personally invites you and me to bring that woundedness to him for healing. But how? Blessed Padre Pino Puglisi, that's quite a tongue twister, would often say, yes, God loves, but always through someone in particular. Especially now, there's more than enough brokenness to go around. So perhaps the challenge of today's gospel is to be unafraid to heal one another with our wounds. Perhaps you'll permit me the privilege of sharing a personal example from my life as I conclude. You might know that my own father passed away when my brother and I were pretty young. I've now lived more life without my dad than with him. So for me, I think it's fair to say that that's been a tough wound to bear. Well, a few years ago, I was directing a retreat for our high school seniors. One particular activity had the kids celebrating the special relationship that exists between parent and child. When I looked up, right away I realized that this year's retreat would be different. In zeroing in on two seniors, Joe and Brianne, I immediately remembered that they too had already lost one of their parents. And my heart went out to them. It was written all over their faces. They too were wounded. So as the rest of the group moved on to night prayer, I asked Joe and Brianne to hang back. It was just the three of us in the room and they likewise knew about my own dad. While we pulled three chairs in close together, I prayed most fervently as I really did not know what words of wisdom I was supposed to share. Well, first I said, you know, we're in this club together. It's not a fun club. There's no clubhouse or secret handshake and none of us asked to be in this club. A little bit of humor in the spirit of St. Philip. Then I continued, you know, if I could be honest, it's never going to be okay that your parent died when they did and that we don't have them anymore. However, what I can tell you is that this does not mean that you'll never again be at peace. That time will come, perhaps not today, perhaps not tomorrow, but it will come little by little. And when those moments of peace creep into our lives, it's okay to embrace them. It's not disrespectful or forgetful of our parent if we allow ourselves the gift of embracing that peace. And then it might pass, but little by little, I've noticed that it grows into longer and longer moments until eventually that peace becomes part of our lives. The three of us in the club then shared a little tear, a warm smile and a hug and rejoin the group. On that retreat, my woundedness was joined to two others. Brienne, Joe, and I helped one another to heal in the intimate way that Jesus healed Thomas. Today, is he perhaps teaching us to do the same? Small things, little ways to reach out to one another, even when we're not sure what to say or do. Perhaps especially in these days of isolation, Arnie would remind us to keep it simple. Maybe just a phone call or a text. One heart reaching out to another. Who today needs us to be Christ to them? Someone to whom we can be Padre Pio's one person in particular. My dear brothers and sisters, filled with passion and joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our loneliness. We make our response praying, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world 
a church that struggles with pandemic, for Francis, our chief shepherd, and for all those who serve in the ministries of the church, that God might grant us the graces we need as the body of Christ, so as to live as servant to one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, that governments might work collaboratively and for the good of all, especially those who are most vulnerable in these days, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of the sick, those on our oratory prayer list, those of our families, among our friends, in our communities, all those who struggle with COVID-19 and other health issues. We ask the Lord to send them healing and support through his people. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are on the front lines of response and care, for doctors and nurses, for technicians, for all those in hospitals. We pray especially for those who are exposed in other ways that keep our society moving and working and food being delivered, that they may be safe and protected. In gratitude for their service, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for all who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, for those who have died in these recent days, for all those for whom we cannot yet publicly mourn, that God will receive all into his tender embrace. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, praise and the glory of God's name, name for our good and good, good of all this holy church. church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those who have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in, in the, the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, and all who serve and minister in the name of your gospel. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, we pray especially for those who have died in recent weeks. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Holy Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Philip, St. John Henry, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and the, the glory, glory are yours, yours now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof but only, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And on behalf of the fathers and brothers of the Oratory, thank you for joining us this Sunday for our liturgy and continue to look forward to sharing this with you again in the future. All are welcome here at our parishes. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. To God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.